What is up guys? Welcome to a brand new video. This is a different kind of video as well. This is actually me spectating or looking at a replay of the Korean Ash build. So the Stitch is one of the Korean challenger players who is doing this build. He plays for Samsung Galaxy, uh, one of the LCK Korean professional teams along with Ruler actually. So they're both on the same team. Uh, Ruler and Stitch are like the two AD carriers that they sw swap between all the time. So the problem with like doing a gameplay of the build every time I do it, because I always do this, right? I always look at a uh, a build and then I try and do a gameplay to show you how it works and stuff. But the problem is like me talking and playing, explaining everything is really hard. And I often end up feeding or just like not really showing off exactly how good it is if I was playing super serious without talking or anything, concentrating. So. This is kind of a good middle ground where I've got a good game which shows a lot of why the pick is really good and hopefully you enjoy it. It's a bit different. I'll probably end up releasing both. I'll do a gameplay as well and you guys can pick which you like prefer. Watch whichever one you want or both I guess if you want to. But this is a really good example of how you actually play the new Korean Ash. So I thought we'd give it a go and see how it works out. So let me know what you think in the comments. But I want to try something a bit different and see how it goes. So this guy is one of the top um, AD carry players in Korea at the moment. Top challenger players. This is a challenger game as well. And the first thing like straight away that you can notice is he's really aggressive on this Lucian. Lucian, one of his biggest problems is how short range he is, right? So this is Ash abusing that fact because Ash has really high range. So Ash is actually a really strong pick in the lane phase. And this build makes it even better. And as you see in this game, one of the reasons I picked it is because one... He has a really big impact in this game, which is really good. You look at the comp as well. Ash and Malzahar are basically the only damage in this comp. So he really needs a high damage build. Otherwise, he's not going to be able to carry and win anyway. And they do get pretty far behind, but then it kind of comes back, which really shows what the build is all about. So, so far, I mean, this is a really good hook, obviously. There's not really much to do with Stitch, though. That's just the AD carry being a beast. The reason that you, I don't know. This is in Korea. They, they have, like, English names use English words but they don't always make sense which is kind of funny I think anyway um so yeah that doesn't really make sense but whatever so you see the, the first two main things Ash has been using her oh flash from the thresh this is because they see Blitzcrank running away by the way so that is all because Blitzcrank ran away for this invade and one of the other things you'll notice is um Stitch actually got his E second to hawk shot into the jungle to see where the enemy Rex there was. Unfortunately Blitz Flash is over. This is like such a Korean clown fiesta. This is honestly always what happens in Korean Challenger because people are so aggressive. They have no chill. They always want to fight. But uh Stitch is gonna blow his heal here on the Gragas to keep him alive. <laughs> actually, Lucian blows his heal as well to keep uh Thresh alive because the mouse heart damage is pretty nuts, actually, level 3, uh, with his Voidlings beating on him. So that's a pretty weird start, right? But one of the biggest things is, I guess you probably wouldn't do this yourself, but uh, he actually got his E first to Hawk Shot instead of the Q. Q's not that much damage this early into the game, so it doesn't matter a ton. Um, and then level 3, he's putting a second point into his body, because that is where a lot of your damage is coming from. You'll see mostly... This guy is using his range, his auto attacks, and his passive to do a lot of damage, and his W to poke. That's basically it. He's not really using it, uh, like extended trades, I guess, that much. He's just trying to get cheeky little autos in. And yeah, this is the biggest problem uh, playing Ash. And we're going to see he actually does die for it. Uh, whether Blitz can get the return kill? Probably not. There are so many minions here. It feels bad. Oh, he actually got it. Nice. Okay, well, good job, Blitz. But he's going to die to the minions. So that is kind of an issue, like when you have this many minions, look how many minions are here. You do not want to fight as an AD carry, but that is Ash's downside right now in this kind of build and just meta in general, right? Let's speed this up. She has no mobility. And this is funny because this is one of the actual like really basic mistakes a lot of people make, even at lower ranks, is when a minion wave is dying, they don't retreat early enough. They kind of hang around thinking they can maybe stay, stay about. And actually, there's no minions to cover you anymore. You can't like uh, hide behind anything and you're just out in the open. So if you have no flash like stitched in, it's really easy to get punished for that. So that is actually, I would class that as a basic error. But obviously, even Chandra players do that because it's just, you want to push your limits as much as possible, right? You can see this is kind of, getting a bit out of control here and this is why i said it's a really good example to show you guys because he's getting like he's getting his ass kicked basically um but this build is actually going to help him bring him back into the game and end up carrying which is really good because i think like a mark of a good build right and whenever i show you something is that 
Games don't go perfectly every time. I can show you a build that is amazing if we stomp, but what's the point? Because you're not always gonna stomp a game, right? More likely, if it works when you're behind, it's gonna work when you're ahead still as well. And then you have both faces covered and that's like perfect for me. So this is kind of what the build is about, but let's speed this up again because Blitzcrank is dead. So he's playing really super safe and using his W here as much as possible to try and farm. But you can see Lucian is really pounding him. There's not much Ash can do at the moment because he got behind. Um, also, the Ash, I believe, is running further this game. So, um, he is running further this game. Now, the further versus Warlords is a bit different, right? Because right now, Warlords would probably be a bit better because he's getting pounded so hard. But further is really good in trades. And it's good with Ash because it buffs your passive damage, it buffs your Q damage, your W damage. All of them have really good AD ratios. Your W is actually 100% um, AD ratio, uh, which is pretty ridiculous. So all of that further damage goes into your W volley damage and your Q as well. Okay, we've seen a run for rise. This is really good though. Look at the Maokai. He insta TPs down to try and help save the, the Ash. Um, and Ash is going to try and return on Solution, but Lucian flashes away. This again highlights the problem of playing Ash. But the good thing is, I think. Yeah, that was actually really well played by the Rise to get out of that. And uh, this is where it's kind of snowboarding a bit out of our team's favor, right? out of the red team's favor. But um, Lucian is as a beast. Further, it does stack up really well on the Ash, but that's kind of the problem is if you don't survive long enough, you don't really have an opportunity to use it. But it is really good to be game when you have more attack speed to stack it faster and your items as well. So it will end up paying off more damage wise, but it's a bit less utility, I guess. And Warlords is decent for the kiting. But what I found is that this build is not really about one big auto attack. It's about a lot of sustained damage. So really you want to have one big attack to heal from rather than just loads of little attacks, right? Which is what Ash kind of does. So unfortunately, like, Warlords is not that great, but it is more defensive. So we kind of survived, by the way, CS-wise. Let's just have a look at builds and stuff very quickly. We're actually ahead in CS in this game um, because he's just a beast farming, honestly. He's not had that much chance to like farm because he's been zoned away a lot but he's using his w well to farm and he's also getting pretty much every single cs that he's allowed to get every cs that isn't like uh, pushed away from him i guess he is getting that so that is one of the really big points this game where Zushin is just missing um unforced making unforced errors i guess is a good way of saying it but we are getting our cards first which is more lifesteal which is really good and a bit more damage in trades and then we'll go into attack speed afterwards. Getting attack speed first doesn't really benefit us very much because we don't have anything in our kit that is reliant on attack speed, really. Maybe our Q stacking, but Q stacking, as I said, is not really a lot of our damage right now anyway. So we're still kind of getting boned here. This Blitz Crank, it's funny, isn't it? Because this is Korean Challenger, right? This is a Challenger game. And this Blitz is what I would class typically, or a lot of us would probably class as um, the support you don't want to get, right? It's like the the guy who is losing you the lane, right? We're having a, a decent lane phase, doing pretty well, but our Blitzcranks is getting caught all the time and dying, and he's never here, so we're missing some CS and not really being able to do anything. It's, it's kind of funny that this is still exactly what happens in Korean Chandra and every single ELO, just because it happens in bronze, and you guys say, like, what do I do with the crap support? Like, I'm still figuring that out in Diamond. It doesn't get any easier, you know? But still, we're doing okay. 11 minutes in, we're almost 3k gold behind those in team, which is pretty bad. Um, it doesn't seem that bad, right? But 7 to 2, they've actually no towers yet, which is a surprise. But we are a little bit behind. But the good thing is now we're going to go back and I think we're going to finish our Blade of the Ruined King. Nope, we're not. Okay, never mind. Never mind. But this build really spikes at your item power point. So, like, a build spike at different uh, stages. So, for example, Lucian spikes uh, when he gets his Dirk, as well as his Ghost Babe. Like, he doesn't have to finish the completed item, because the completed item gives you a bit more lethality and stuff. I think it gives you a bit more lethality, right? But it doesn't actually give you a, whole, uh, a ton of stuff. Like, when you have the components, it's already very strong. Whereas, when you have... Um, uh, when you have like the components for Bork, it's actually not that good. Components for Runes are not that good. Components for Black Cleaver are not that good. The, the power points come from when you finish them and when you get the unique passives and stuff. So that's really where it comes into play more. And that's why we have to... Now we've got our Bork. That's, that's where we have to really uh, abuse the spikes we get when we get our items. And that's part of what this is because a lot of this is farming up. 
and waiting for those items. But Lucian really is much more powerful than Ash in general as an early aggressive pick. And Ash is on his own a lot in this game. But it's what you can do after you get the items and into the rest of the game as well. That was a pretty poor ult from Lucian, honestly. But even so, Blitzcrank is like flanking here. But you can't flank a team that's, you know, a little bit stronger than you. So <laughs> probably not going to work out too well. That was a really good hook from Blitzcrank, though. He just randomly hooked him in the bush, which is great. And then that's where the Ash burst damage comes in. Normally, Ash doesn't do that much burst, right? But Bork plus your Q plus your W is actually uh, quite a lot of damage. And this is where Ash does more than you think he do uh, she does. Which is why I think the early build is actually really strong. Partly just from that perspective, honestly. And now, see, I know this is like not 100% the build, but Ash is actually doing a lot of damage now. She had uh, eight server stacks in that fight, stacking up quicker because of the attack speed on the Bork. More AD anyway, and the percentage damage is going to come in a tiny bit, but it's more the 100 magic damage you have. Also, Ash is really good at pushing towers because her Q works on them. Often, actually, it's not that bad to. I don't know. It's. Really, you want to have the five sacks as four sacks as you go uh, into the tower, so you can activate it rather than like CS minions on the side and then like use your Q. I guess it doesn't really make too much sense. Um, now, what actually Stitch does, which is another reason why I wanted to show this off, uh, is he goes Black Cleaver second. He doesn't go Rune second. So I said in my video, I like Rune second. The reason I like Rune second is because. Uh, it feels better. It's like more attack speed. It's more AOE damage. You're not relying on the armor shred as much. But if you get Black Cleaver second, you get more cooldown reduction, uh, which is really good for Ash because you can have more arrows. Um, you have the armor shred already with your Q and stuff, so you don't need the Runins. Runins is AOE armor shred, but obviously Black Cleaver is a very fast single target shred. Like it's five in the first um, attack with your Q. So it's really good against people like Poppy, for example. And you can see, right, just to make the point, this Poppy doesn't have any armor yet. So all of that percentage damage that you're doing uh, with your Bork is really ripping them apart. But if you just imagine, like, having a... Well, there's going to be another fight here. I think we're going to run away from this one. If you imagine, um, like... I think I, I think Poppy died quite quickly, actually, there. If you imagine you just had an Essence Reaver instead, I don't think Poppy dies that fast, you know? Like, you have good AD, so you have good poke, you have good mana sustain, and you have some crit. If you, But, like, crit is not that great if you only have one item worth of it. And I don't... I Like, the cooldown reduction on Essence Reaver is really good, right? But... Again, you're just going to be spamming your W and your Q over and over. So you don't actually do that much damage single target. Whereas Bork is all about that single target damage. And we're all able to kill a Poppy already equal level. Which I don't think normally you'd be able to do with another build. Which is why Bork is so disgustingly good. Anyway, we're going to go back and get a Phage and Boots. Boots gives us the attack speed to stack up our Q faster. And also use more Bork damage. Uh, Boots 2 is also really good on Ash because she's got pretty crappy mobility. Um... And then we're going to get the Phage because we can kite better AD. Honestly, the Kindle Gem is so bad. Like you, This is what I mean about the component parts are not that good. Like Phage is okay, but health, AD, kiting, you already kite like a beast because you can slow. Like, what's the point, right? Um, so, really, component-wise, Black Cleaver is pretty crap. It's just when you finish the item that you do it. The other thing you're going to notice that I haven't actually mentioned yet is the way that Sitch plays is obviously the rotation here to top lane is a bit higher level than most of us are going to see in our games. But what he's actually doing is he's just moving to another lane and trying to arrow every single time. He arrowed the Poppy. He just arrowed the Lucian off cooldown. So every single time his Ash ult is off cooldown, he is using it to try and kill somebody. That is something that's really big and you really want to have in like all of your games, basically. Um... You can learn a lot from this kind of playstyle. Like, he's roaming around. He's impacting every single lane, which a lot of ADs don't do. He's, they just farm and stuff. But actually, like, an AD like Ash does a lot of damage on one item already. And you kind of want to group and use the damage, but you also want to use the arrow ultimate, right? So he's using it every single time it comes up cooldown to try and pick somebody and try and get a fight. Lucian flashed away from the last one, so we didn't get anything from it. But we still got the tower and forced him away. Part of that, obviously, I guess, is team. A little bit like if your team's around you can use your arrow but even so like you just go to where your team is and use the arrow there instead right and this is where we started to swing the game entirely back around and you'll notice we swung it back around after we picked up our board 
I know it sounds weird that all of this has come from one item, and it's not all of it has come from one item, obviously, but he played super passive the entire lane phase, right? He just sat back, he farmed, Blitz was kind of like screwing his lane up a lot. But then as soon as like he got the Bork, that's when he flipped the switch and um, he, he started going way more aggressive because he had the Bork and he had the damage. Like that is, it's, it's his playstyle completely changed once he gets the item. Now I picked up a, a Black Cleaver as well. So we're gonna be absolutely ripping through the armor that Poppy does now have or is starting to get and also the Rek'Sai. Remember it is his base as well. So it's still gonna be really strong. But this is where he's gonna start to use his Q a bit more. Black Cleaver makes you pretty tanky, honestly. Like, you have, uh, well, more tanky than a normal AD, right? So you can survive a bit more, which is nice if you get caught. There are a, a lot of times, actually, where I've survived longer than I probably should have with Ash with this build, just because you naturally are a bit more resistant, I think. You have more lifesteal and stuff. But now, the big thing is to remember at this point, just when he has these two items, if we look, by the way, um, he is still two items, Lucian is still two items. So the game is actually still relatively even. Like they have a Rise, a Poppy, a Rek'Sai, Lucian. That's a pretty damage heavy comp. Um, also relatively tanky as well at the same time. But the important thing to note as to why, that arrow by the way just hit Rise in the face. Again, arrow off cooldown, he groups, he arrows. That was a really good hook from Blitzcrank though. And now he's using his Q and he's absolutely ripping through people. Black Lever again is stacking onto the Rek'Sai. Now stacking onto the uh, <laughs> onto the Thresh, and they actually managed to get that with the Mouse Heart. But that's where like a lot of his power is coming from right now. But this is going to be—it's not just like, oh wow, you're reducing his armor. That's so good, right? His armor is being reduced, which means you have more Q damage. I mean, you have more. Okay, that was a bit weird. Uh, Sitch actually has aggro from this, so he's killing the tower first, which is really smart, and then he's going on to the uh, going on to the Poppy. And because you shred the armor so fast with this, with the five stacks instantly 25 reduction with just one Q, it's really hard for a tank to deal with because you don't have, normally Black Cleaver is okay, but it takes some ramping time, right? Six auto attacks to get to full stacks, Ash needs two. So it, it's a massive like difference where all of a sudden, pretty much all of your armor is just gone. And obviously everybody else is doing more damage. So he actually doesn't have any AD on his team. This is another thing that's kind of cool to look at though. It's like a lot of people said, uh, yeah, this is really good when you have AD top lane, AD mid, whatever, AD jungle. But actually, no, it's not. It just gives you loads more damage than you need normally. So uh, it's buffing your passive damage because that's a bonus AD damage. So less armor means more pa uh, more damage from your passive. Autos, obviously, that's pretty um, pretty obvious. W damage, though. Uh, also, your... Um, What's the last one? Also, uh, Blade of the Ring King. So, your Blade of the Ring King percentage damage, but it's physical damage. So, it does get reduced by armor, but it doesn't get reduced as much. It does more damage because you're shredding them all with Black Lever. Uh, so, this is like... You can see, basically, the reason Black Lever is so overpowered on Ash is because you stack it so fast because your Q that does 5 instantly. But also, just because it buffs a crap ton of damage. Here comes another arrow, by the way. Again... This whole game was basically carried by Stitch. This is why I picked it. He has like an okay team, but they're nothing special. Like, it's not, you see by the way as well, he's actually just attacking the closest target because his build rips through tanks so fast. He doesn't go, he doesn't try and like backline. He doesn't try and be useless or anything like that. Like normally an Ash at two items is not that strong. Runins and an Essence Reaver, you don't do that much damage. You're there for an arrow engage. But afterwards, that's basically it. This is Arrow. You still have the cooldown reduction, but you're going to be killing everybody at the same time. So it, it's a real carry build, which is why it's so insane. Um, oh, I forgot what I was going to say before. As if I wish I could just like rewind 30 seconds to see what I was talking about and then uh, carry on. Uh, but one second, let's just see if he gets this Rek'Sai. This game is kind of snowboarding pretty heavily. I right, but as I say. Sitch is kind of like carrying this whole game, in my opinion. Um, it's this AD carry in 2K17 meme, but actually, this game, you have a utility AD who can impact the map amazingly well and engage and pick good fights and stuff, but also does loads of damage. So he's like completely outclassing the Lucian right now, out damaging Lucian in fights massively um, with a relatively similar build as well. Like, He's gone for the armor shred, the same as Lucian, but Lucian just cannot get into these fights and cannot really do very much. 
so like damage wise, Ash is outputting a ton more. And now we have the runes, so we have the AOE armor shred. But basically every single time, yeah, he actually field gold that one. The one time I tracked the arrow and field gold. Um, so if, if we look at the rest of the team, like Malzahn's having a pretty good game. Um, Maokai not so much really, Blitzcrank definitely not, Gragas average I guess, but Stitch is really controlling the pace of the game, and you can see part of this is because he's an LCK player, he knows the game very well, game knowledge is great, so uh, what that means is like, he can, he knows what to do, and because he's Ash, he can group and he can do it more, right, but every single time he groups with his team, he just arrows somebody, catches them out of position, and then he has the follow up damage as well, that's the biggest difference with this build, but this increases his wave clear, his Q applies on all of the runes bolts, so it's crazy damage, it's crazy armor shred, and all of a sudden your bulk damage is going to be doing through the roof. Like, it's ridiculous because obviously the percentage damage applies on all three bolts, right? So that does a lot of damage anyway, but when everybody has the black cleaver stacks on them and the armor shred, all of a sudden your black, uh, your Vader and King does more damage on all three targets. So, like, overall DPS wise in a team fight, your impact it skyrockets with this combination. This is where the three item spike really comes in. And again, he's much stronger than he was before. Now he has his Q active, as you can see. He's just cutting backwards, but this is where he actually goes for the Lucian uh, and uses his arrow, which is really clever. So I'm actually, I'm really afraid of skipping back, but we're gonna do it anyway. And we're gonna slow it down because normally when I press backspace, so just to slow it down a little bit, he focuses the Thresh, he gets his Q active and starts doing it straight away. Now, actually at this point, by the way, he has completely ruined Poppy's armor. Like, um, he, he was attacking Thresh, right? But Poppy has six Black Lever stacks already because he, uh, just because of the runes. He's not attacked Poppy, The Poppy already has 30% less armor. That's kind of what, like where a lot of the broken stuff comes from. Um, and also if we look at Rise, Rise already has one stack of it and he's not even that close, right? But this is where it gets really interesting because he finished off the Thresh, he goes to the Poppy, but then Lucian actually dashes into the fight. Now remember, this is a 3v4, okay? So even though these guys are, are semi-fed, this is a, a tank Maokai. This is a Blitzcrank support who doesn't do very much damage and Stitch, okay? So a versus a Lucian, a Rise, a Poppy, and the support. So this is top laner. This is a three solo laners, three laners and uh, the support who went down first and absorbed all the damage. So th this is like, uh, the reason that I found this so cool is because this is really, he is the only damage in this fight. And as soon as Lucian dashes in, he instantly swaps. Now the interesting thing is the first time uh, he attacks, by the way, he already has eight further sacks because he's been attacking so much. This is where further comes in massively. He, uh, Lucian already has six stacks of the Black Cleaver reduction and Stitch has only attacked him once because of the runes again. So. Runes has reduced everybody, well, Rice has two stacks. The um, Poppy is dying on the side because of the arm reduction. Not even being attacked now by the Ash, but he's actually dying to the passive shots, um, like on the Runes. And then he turns on, he arrows the uh, Lucian in the face. And then we're gonna get this one, and then we're gonna go for the Rise, last of all, with the volley. And there you go. So this is where, uh, as I said, <laughs> The damage on this build is absolutely ridiculous. That was a 3v4. I know they were behind and stuff, but that's still a Lucian with two and a half items. That's still a Rise with two and a half items, and a Poppy with a Sunfire, Visage, and a Chain Vest. Tell me three item Ash can get through a Poppy that fast and burst a Lucian that fast uh, and, and kill a Rise at the same time. That's kind of why this build spikes so hard at three. Now, after this, actually, you fall off a little bit. You don't... Okay, so it's like a power spike-wise. Um, you have... You kind of like this. Like, going slowly up, right? Can you see this? You can. Okay. I'm going to pause this here because um, this is the end of the game. So I don't really want to go out of this. But basically, you go up a bit like this. Then you jump up every time. So you're always going up a bit. Jump up when you finish your first item, your blade. Then you go up a little bit. Then you jump up again when you get your black cleaver. Then you go up and then you jump up again when you get your... Um, get your runes, whatever your third item is going to be. But then after that, for your fourth item, it's just kind of like a straight power curve, right? It doesn't really jump again because there's no special synergy there at all. It's just building for your late game damage. So like Phantom Dancer, Infinity Edge. I guess Infinity Edge is a little bit of a jump, but it's very ham. But anything else, you're just kind of like scaling off like this, right? Whereas another AD carry is just going to be like more of a straight kind of power curve. But at the end, kind of like four items that are probably going to equal out to you. Uh, maybe... 
yeah, they're probably going to equal out to you, maybe even do more damage. So this is why, like, I wanted to use this game because you saw how Sitch's place are changed at one, two, three items. Three items, he absolutely demolished that fight. Uh, two items, he was roaming around and doing an absolute ton. He was wrecking this Poppy in front line. And one item, he was wrecking the Lucian, uh, especially, actually, but just in normal fights anyway, he was doing a lot more damage. Even to that Poppy, he was doing a lot of damage. So that kind of shows you how your playstyle changes. You kind of farm, get your blade, then you just run around the map, you arrow every time it's off cooldown, you snowball the game yourself, and you can carry that way, uh, but doing a lot more damage than normal. That is the big thing with this build. You do way more damage than a normal Ash build, but you still have the same utility aspect as before. So I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, video. Let me know what you think of it, because it's a bit different to what I normally do, right? I'm very different, actually. And I don't know if you guys are going to enjoy seeing this kind of thing or not. Um, let me know in the comments. Like the video if you do. And uh, yeah, just let me know if you enjoy it. Thank you very much for watching the video. And I'll catch you in the next one.